Welcome to the City of Lethbridge Wastewater Treatment Plant. My name is Dwayne Guzzi. I'm the process coordinator of the facility. Today we're going to talk about the functioning of the wastewater treatment plant and how it works. The City of Lethbridge Wastewater Treatment Plant is a biological nutrient removal plant which treats its effluent with ultraviolet light and produces heat and electricity from its sludge product. The wastewater is collected from all over the city, from all the home schools and businesses, and enters the plant here. Once the wastewater is collected in the channel, it enters our headworks building. Here, we go through our six millimeter screens, which takes out things like plastics, axe handles, tree branches, and a variety of other large objects from entering the system. From there, the water progresses to our grit chambers here. And what happens here is this is where we take out all of the sand, dirt, and what we call in our business grit. The water that you see flowing in this channel right now has been screened and grit removed. From here now, it will move through this channel to the primary clarifiers. Now the water enters our primary clarifiers. We have four circular and two rectangular clarifiers on plan. At this point, what we do is we slow the flow down and all the heavy organic material settles to the bottom of the tanks. The wastewater leaves our primary clarifiers and enters our bioreactors. The bioreactors are where we keep the bacteria on the plant. The bacteria's job is to actually use the, all the fine dissolved salts that is in the primary effluent and use it as a food base. It goes through our five bioreactors. As it enters the bioreactor, it goes through a variety of zones. The first zone it goes through is the anaerobic zone, and then it goes through two anoxic zones, and then an aeration zone. Through the different zones, what happens is that the fine particulate matter is removed, as well as the, a variety of nutrients that are actually dissolve in the wastewater. From here, we'll continue to the secondary clarifier. Once the bacteria have finished doing their job in the bioreactors, we send them to the secondary clarifiers. Again, we slow the flow down, so the bacteria, being fat and happy, settle to the bottom of the tanks. The clear effluent goes over the weir, goes over to UV disinfection, and from there it goes to the Old Man River. And that's the first part of the process done. The second part of the process is the digestion of the primary sludge and all the bacteria that we won't be reusing. Essentially what happens is it will be pumped over to this building here. This is our digester building. And here what will happen is that we have anaerobic bacteria which will take the primary sludge and the bacteria we don't need, use it as food and break down the solids to a point which will be manageable for the plant. What happens after that is all of the methane that is produced in that breakdown will be moved over to our cogeneration motors in which will be used for fuel to make electricity and heat for the plant. What's left now is an inorganic substrate that will be moved over to our lagoons. There we will dewater and the water, dewatering part will actually be brought back to the plant for treatment and what's left will be picked up and put into trucks and used as fertilizer on land. At the wastewater treatment plant, we monitor virtually every function, every operation in the plant by computer. The computer pretty much looks at everything that we currently do on plant and how everything is running. It monitors all the flows, if the equipment's on or off, and uh, what kind of state the equipment's in, if it's actually failing or not. Both anaerobic digesters depicted on screen. We're looking at digester number three and digester number four. What we're looking at essentially is what valves are open that are feeding the digester. We actually can see motors running and pumps running, and the pumps are showing us that the heat exchangers, for instance, are uh, getting flow from the digesters and going back. So we're actually heating all the digester uh, microorganisms up to 37 degrees Celsius, and the temperatures are actually recorded on, on the screen. This gives us an idea of basically how everything is running, and so the operator doesn't have to go out there and actually monitor each one of the individual operations. You can actually see it from here. On the other screen, uh, the screen to the left, is uh, new stations that we monitor for the, for the wastewater plant. Virtually all the wastewater can't get here on its own. Sometimes it needs help. We have a variety of list stations all over the city of Lethbridge that pick up the waste, put it in pipes, and bring it back down to the plant. We have to monitor each of the stations. Uh, if we don't, we won't know if they're running, we won't know if they're pumping, and we could have a big problem <laughs> if, if we didn't know uh, what their function, functionality is at any one time. Essentially what we're looking at is a drop of mixed liquor or the bacteria that's in the wastewater plant. I've taken a drop of mixed liquor, put it on a slide, goes through my microscope, into my digital camera, and onto my plasma TV. We are looking at bacteria and protozoans. The reason why we do that essentially is just to look, determine the health of our bacteria. Because it's all microscopic, we need the aid of a microscope. What we're seeing here is a cluster of bacteria. 
All of this stuff that looks like, bat, uh, looks like cotton batten is our bacteria itself. Even with a microscope, bacteria are very, very small, so we don't get to see the bacteria individually, but we do get to see them in groups. The other organisms that are there are protozoans. This particular protozoan is a stock silicate. Its specific name is epistalis. What this organism does is it lives in mixed liquor and helps the bacteria consume all of the wastewater, all the sewage. What you're looking at is the wastewater coming to the plant. This is untreated wastewater. This is what's coming from the homes and schools and businesses, and this is coming to the plant untreated, so we haven't done anything to it yet. The first stage is primary treatment. The whole purpose of primary treatment is to take out the heavy material. So you notice there's lots of heavy material in this one. This is, the, this is untreated. Not so much heavy material in this one. This is after primary treatment. The whole purpose of primary treatment is to remove this heavy material. Once that's done, we'll move this to our bioreactors. One thing I want you to notice though, the cloudiness in each one of these vessels. Even after primary treatment, the cloudiness does not change. This is the dissolved organics that are in the wastewater. The most effective way to get this out is with our bacteria. That's in this vessel here. The bacteria, what they do is they munch and crunch and have a good time and they eat all of this material up. When they use, finish using this as a food base, we sell the bacteria out and the clear effluent goes to UV disinfection and then to the river. By looking at the three vessels that we have here, showing how the wastewater treatment plant runs, uh, it's easy to miss the amount of technology that's involved with the plant itself. The City of Lethbridge wastewater treatment plant is very innovative. Uh, when the wastewater treatment plant was first conceived in the early 1900s, uh, roughly around 1912, the plant was uh, hailed as a technological marvel. The plant still is one of these. The wastewater facility is actually a BNR facility, which means it is a biological nutrient removal facility. This facility also looks after phosphorus removal and nitrogen removal, as well as reduction of fecal and total coliform. The facility, as well as the water treatment plant, both run under licensing. They're licensed by the provincial government. Both facilities have rules and obligations that we have to meet, and we have to meet these legally, which means to say that if the, fa uh, the plant failure to treat wastewater or failure to, to make potable water is actually held in, in uh, legislative view by the Alberta government. To work on one of these facilities, or actually to operate one of these facilities, you have to be licensed by the Alberta government and there's a variety of licensing that takes place. Uh, for the wastewater facility, we have to be licensed from one to four, uh, an operator one to an operator four. An operator four takes uh, about four to six years in which secondary education is required, and uh, a variety of provincial exams have to be uh, performed. That's before you can actually do anything on one of these facilities.